Amen. Today is um, the Feast of Our Lady of uh, Sorrows, the Seven Sorrows of Mary. And uh, this is um, similar to the Exaltation of the Cross. It's a feast which is proper to uh, around the time of our Lord's Passion, uh, Holy Week and so on. In fact, this, um, this is a feast which has two, kind of two feast days. One is the Friday of Passion Week, uh, right before Holy Week, and then and then also today. Uh, but as before, as with with the Feast of the Holy Cross, the Exaltation of the Cross yesterday, um, during Holy Week, everything surrounding our Lord's Passion, all the focus is on is on that is on our Lord, His saving mission, and so on. Uh, but there's so much to think about. There's there's so many other things to consider uh, that we don't have time to do it all when it's happening, uh, and so. Later throughout the year, we have these different feast days uh, calling us back to uh, the, the passion of our Lord, which is quite fitting. I think we're almost uh, nearly uh, halfway uh, from Easter at, at this time of year. Uh, so it's good. It's good to remember that throughout the entire year, uh, that really it's the passion of Christ. It's, it's his sacrifice on the cross that should be central in our minds. And, and fitting, uh, you know, to honor Our Lady, who is, is called the co-redemptrix, co-redemptrix with Christ. It was, it was through her that he entered the world, and, and with her that he exited the world. Uh, and her role in it was, was, um, uh, was significant. Uh, now, this, this particular devotion, the Seven Sorrows of Our Lady, uh, this, this is a devotion popularized by the Servites. Uh, this was an order founded in the 13th century by um, the, what's called the Seven Holy Founders. Uh, these are seven men from Florence, Italy, uh, and, and, they, and they put together this order, and um, it's continued in the church, and, and, and they gave kind of um, uh, some popular devotions around Our Lady of Sorrows. Uh, so meditation uh, upon the passion and death of our Lord and, and, and the sorrows of Mary were something that, that already you know, what was being venerated and, 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 and thought upon, uh, but they gave it a definite uh, structure. And they identified seven sorrows of Our Lady, uh, which we will go through today, kind of, kind of a meditation considering uh, these sorrows of Our Lady. But these are only uh, representative. There are, there are many more sorrows of Our Lady. Uh, these are just some, but they are uh, kind of headings under which we can consider other things. Um, and, and those sorrows are the, the prophecy of Simeon, uh, when, when, when that holy man Simeon prophesied to Our Lady when they brought him to the temple, uh, he uttered that prophecy that he would be a sign that would be contradicted and that a sword of sorrow would pierce her heart. Uh, that's, that's the one. Uh, the flight into Egypt, uh, the loss of the child Jesus in the temple, uh, Jesus and Mary meet on the way of the cross, um, uh, our Lord Jesus dies on the cross, our Lord's body is taken from the cross, and then our Lord's body is placed in the tomb. Those are the seven sorrows. And um, I think it was uh, um, the, the uh, Robert of St. Lawrence says that the, the, this whole devotion springs from the first sorrow, that uh, the sword of sorrow shall pierce Our Lady's heart. Um, he says that... Um, that sword, and it lasted her whole life, like when, when, when that prophecy of Simeon, when she um, f- uh, first uh, began to experience, or God revealed to her the sufferings that would come upon her son, um, that sword was, was enough to cause her death not once, but a thousand times. And her death was more bitter because it was prolonged over her whole life. Uh, leading up to the Passion, she suffered uh, because she knew what was coming, and then after the Passion, she suffered because uh, Christ was no longer with her. Um, so going through these, um, we actually see that, um, you know, uh, we can always go to Our Lady in all of our trials and difficulties. Uh, we can go to her in our joys, in our hopes, and especially in our sorrows. For there is no sorrow that Our Lady has not in some manner felt herself. Uh, this is what God does. He doesn't ask of us anything he's not willing to do himself. So he became man, God became man, God suffered everything, God experienced everything that we, we experience in this life. 
but he didn't just want to do that himself. He wanted to have, you could say, um, a good father wants all of his children to have something they can identify with. So men especially can go to, well, it, we can always go to both our Lord and our Lady, but men, our example is Christ, and women, your example is the Blessed Virgin. And so Our Lady suffered everything in life that, that you can suffer, specifically. Uh, but, but in general, the, the, the sorrows, um, any sorrow we can experience, she sorrowed. And, and many people suffer from the sorrow of dread, of fear, of anticipation of what is coming. And that characterized Our Lady's entire life <clears throat> from the moment of the prophecy of Simeon. She lived constantly in dread of what she knew was going to happen. She knew that her son would be, would be uh, horribly uh, killed. She knew that he was going to be, uh, have a, a painful exit from this life. And she knew that she would witness it. That, is, that was a certain knowledge of hers. And that was, that was a tremendous sorrow her whole life. Every joyful event in, in her son's life, oh, his first cute little baby steps, right? His first, you know, attempts at speaking in the back of her mind was that he's going to be brutally murdered. She couldn't enjoy anything uh, 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 in life that was pleasant or joyful without, in the back, this shadow of death knowing what was coming. That was a tremendous sorrow, her whole life that she experienced. Uh, but she did so courageously, not in de like a debilitating fear. People can be incapacitated by dread. Not so Our Lady. All right, she, she lived her life. You would never have known that she was carrying that sorrow in her heart. Uh, so, so if for anybody that suffers, rightly or wrongly, from that fear of dread, Our Lady knows how you feel, and you can go to her, and she can provide you with comfort. She can, she can teach you how to endure and keep going uh, despite that great fear. The second sorrow, the flight into Egypt, is the sorrow of rejection. Uh, no sooner had the Savior entered this world uh, to save it from its sin than the world tried to kill him. The world rejected him. Right, as St. John says in chapter one of his gospel, uh, um, the world loved darkness and, and, and the world knew not its own creator. Light came into the world and the world rejected light uh, because it, it loved the darkness. And Mary knew this. She knew the foolishness of men who preferred evil to the savior who would heal them from it. Uh, no sooner had he entered the world than he was running for his life. And, and she saw the, 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 the foolishness of Herod for, uh, for the sake of a few years, a few more years of hanging on to his temporal power as a king, he was going to try to murder her son. And that's not even what her son wanted. His kingdom was safe from Christ. Herod had nothing to worry about. Why was he trying to kill her son? There was no threat, nothing. And, and yet for, for a few more years, three, four, five more years, uh, Herod would condemn his soul to damnation. And Mary sorrowed over that. Herod is still there, suffering in hell uh, for, for, for hanging on, trying to hang on for five more years, which has been gone now for, for 2,000. Uh, what a pitiful trade. Uh, Mary also experienced the, the sorrow of her infant son, uh, Christ our Lord being man and God. Uh, he, he knew as God that he was, he was being rejected by his own people, and he felt that as a tiny infant. So this poor infant uh, feels rejection and doesn't know what to do with it. So her son is, is crying, and, and Mary, she can't, she can't comfort him. She can't tell him that, that, no, these people aren't rejecting you because they are, and he feels it and he knows it. Um, and she knew, too, as well, that although um, Herod would not be successful in seeking the child's life, um, while, while her child would escape from the, from the hands of the Jews, uh, the man would not. And she knew that, that, um, that, that ultimately they would be successful in, um, in, in killing her son. Uh, and so this, this is, uh, she, so this is kind of like her sorrows here are the, 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 um, the sorrow over the foolishness of others who prefer evil over good, and also the sorrow of rejection, those who are rejected by their own kinsfolk, their family, their children, uh, anybody who has had, had their, their, their deep, earnest love for another person rejected. Uh, Our Lady knows how you feel. You can go to her with that sorrow. Um, there's the loss of the child Jesus in the temple. This is the sorrow of the, the, the pain of loss, the sorrow of loss, and the sorrow of confusion. Uh, for Our Lady, um, having through no fault of her own, was deprived of not, not just the presence of her son for that period of time, but she was deprived of knowing where he was. Was he safe? Was he not safe? Was, was this the moment? Was, was this when he would give his life for mankind? Um, she didn't know. 
And, and that, that confusion is um, communicated to our Lord when she says, um, son, why have you done this to us? It was not a rebuke or a reproach. It was an actual question. I don't understand. And our Lord's answer, he answers her question with a question. Did you not know I must be about my father's house or be about my father's business? And uh, they did not understand what he meant, right? Even Our Lady didn't understand the explanation our Lord gave to her. And so when we are confused about sorrow and events in our life, and Lord, why have you done this? And he, he perhaps gives an answer, and we don't understand. We are in good company. Our Lady knows that sorrow, she too, has felt the pain of not understanding the will of God and being confused. Uh, and there's Jesus and Mary on the way of the cross, and this is the sorrow of compassion. Uh, when our Lord and Our Lady meet, and she sees her son, and he is in such a pain and agony and sorrow, and, and she tries to console him, and, and he sees how much his pain is affecting her. And, and of course, what does he do? He, he sorrows even more because she's in pain. Uh, and this is, this is the pain of compassion when we sorrow over what is happening to somebody else. And we're helpless. We can't help them. We can't do anything. Uh, we can just sorrow over them and, and, and ask that, that it be over as soon as possible, that, that whatever God needs to accomplish, he accomplishes, uh, but we can do nothing. And so that helplessness you feel, that pain you feel, the sorrow you feel, especially over children, uh, parents whose children have gone astray, there's nothing you can do. You can sit there, simply sit there and pray and sorrow. Our Lady knows how you feel. <coughs> Uh, the fifth sorrow, Jesus dies on the cross, and this is the sorrow of death. Uh, the agony of death, uh, whether over uh, others or even ourselves, right? There's the separation, the pain, the loss um, of death. It was not what God intended, uh, but it is the pain, uh, the, the cause of original sin, right? And how much Our Lady would have wished to die a thousand times in place of her son, uh, but she could not. She had to sit there and witness the death of the one she loved. Um, St. Bernard of Clairvaux recognizes this as, as being, this is, the, this is the fulfillment of that prophecy of Simeon, spoken so long ago when he says, a sword of sorrow will pierce your heart. And he says that this is the spear that pierced the heart of our Savior. Uh, he says, Christ felt not the spear as he was already dead, but the Blessed Virgin felt it in her own immaculate heart. And the blood and water gushed forth from our Lord's heart, while oceans of love and sympathy flowed forth from the heart of Our Lady. Our Lord suffered the, the wound, uh, but she felt the pain. And so Our Lady knows what it's like to stand there looking at a grave, looking at a tomb of someone that she loved so much. Uh, so for, for those who have felt that pain of loss, uh, she knows how you feel. And then the body is taken from the cross. It's not just that uh, the death has happened, but that the memory remains. Uh, and so, so much um, pain, it's been said that it's not actually pain that causes trauma, it's the memory of pain. And so it, there is a renewed sorrow and a renewed loss when memories come to us. And so certainly Our Lady would have felt that remembering, uh, you know, those moments of her son uh, when he had been alive and, and now he was dead. Uh, she remembered that and felt the sorrow. Um, But she understands, right? Remembering that pain, bringing it back, um, Our Lady knows how not to let that control your life, right? She certainly felt that temptation to be incapacitated. It's similar to that fear of dread. Uh, there, there is the agony of memory. And our, you can't let that control, you can't let that debilitate you. Uh, go to Our Lady and she will help you to overcome that and to endure, even as she continued to endure. And then the final seventh sorrow, uh, Jesus' body is placed in the sepulcher. Uh, this is the sorrow of life. There's a sorrow of death, but there's a sorrow in living when you would rather be dead. And that was what Our Lady had to endure. Now that her son was, was exited this life, there was no more reason for her on this life that she felt for her personally. Uh, everything she wanted was in that sepulcher. Uh, she was longing for death at this point, waiting to be reunited with her son uh, by her own death, uh, but she had to wait. She had to go on living. Uh, nothing in life brought her any joy. Nothing in life brought her comfort. The only comfort was the thought that one day she too would die. Her heart was in that tomb with Christ. Uh, but she had to go on living. 
And so those who do sorrow and suffer from the pain of living, Our Lady knows how you feel as well, and she can bring you comfort. Uh, so these are but some, but some of the sorrows of Mary, and there are uh, many others. And we often think of Our Lady as being beautiful and kind and compassionate. Uh, where do we think that compassion came from? Where do we think her mercy came from? It came from the ocean of bitterness that engulfed her soul. And she took it all, she experienced it at all, and this is why she is called the Queen of Martyrs. Uh, St. Alphonsus de Gori says, the martyrs suffered much and died, Our Lady suffered more and lived. Uh, and we should not forget that, uh, that, that, that her, 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 um, her mercy, her compassion, even her wisdom came from her sorrow. It came because she was acquainted with agony and sorrow and bitterness, far more so than any of us could ever have been, and that made her beautiful and made her wise and made her compassionate beyond compare. And so that is a way we can imitate Our Lady, not by letting our bitterness consume us, our pain consume us, by letting it transform us, and then we can become uh, not an ocean, but something of that, a drop of an ocean of mercy and compassion for others. That is the way to alleviate suffering and pain in the world, is by accepting it with Christ, with Our Lady, letting it transform us, and then giving to others uh, the wisdom and compassion that we have learned from it. Uh, so let us ask for that grace from Our Lady uh, and fly to her in all of our sorrows and difficulties. Our Lady, pray for us. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.